Hi everyone, in this section we will look at this bias variance to composition topic and we will also make mathematical derivation of this. As you remember, we have our error in terms of bias square plus variance and noise. And in these terms, the noise term cannot be reduced. But good news is that we can change the bias and variance through our model selection. And if you make some good choices over there, we can overall reduce our errors. Here's the open form of this decomposition. On the left side, we have the error, and on the, on the right hand side, we have this bias square, variance, and noise. And in this derivation, we will start with this error term, then hopefully we will end up seeing these terms on the right hand side. We are using the mean squared error, and it's given like this, expected value of y minus f at d of x squared. Here y is the true label, and this f at d of x is the prediction. Here we are using a learned model, f at d is a learned model that we learned previously on this data set d. Let's look at the other terms. So bias is coming like this from our derivation, f of x minus f bar of x. f of x is a true function, so this is a true underlying relationship. And f bar of x is considered as the mean or average function, or we can also call this this typical function or typical model. We can calculate this by considering many data sets, let's call like millions of them, train our models like millions of time on this. And when we take the average of those millions models, this becomes our average model. This doesn't have to be a million, but just to give you an idea. And the variance is easily calculated by measuring the variance of our predictions. We can also mathematically write it like this, expected value term. And the noise turns out to be this term coming from this decomposition. In this derivation, we are looking at the regression problem, and we have this mean squared error. And we have this x, y data points. We are using axis to predict y's. Here we will write y in terms of f of x plus independent random noise. Here again, f of x is the true function, and we have this independent random noise. This noise should be independent from any other randomness inherent in X, and it should have mean zero. Overall, this will be useful when we go on with this derivation. Also, the function f is deterministic. We can think of it as averaging the answer or the true distribution in the world for that input. So we can simply say that this can be the expected value of y for the given input set. So let's go on. Here we are looking at the random process. Here, for example, we can have lots of data sets randomly, and we can train models on these data sets. The trained models are called f at d, and we can use these models to make some predictions. We can also have some additional randomness. For example, if we were to use stochastic gradient descent to train these models, that would be an additional randomness. But our overall goal is to understand our error for some new input x. So this is some unseen data. Let's start our derivation. In this derivation, you see these expected value terms. So to help you out a little bit, I also added these uh, rules here. So we are going to use this in this derivation, and it will be easier. So let's start with the error term. In this error term, we have this y. So we can plug in this f of x plus noise. So it turns into this term here, and we will take the square of this. So let's take the square. When we take the square, we will have these two square terms and this multiplication term. Here we will apply this first rule. Expectation of this summation becomes this separate expectations, then we sum them. So we apply that here, and with that we will have these three separate expected values, and we sum them. We also applied one, of, one other rule here. So the second one, if you have a constant inside this expected value, it goes out. Here, this two was actually inside this multiplication. So it went out because it's a constant. And this is what we have. Here, as a next step, we will focus on this multiplication. We have this noise term in this multiplication. This noise term is independent of everything else. And we also assume that it has mean 0. 
So this is going to be a useful information. This time we will use this third rule here. The expected value of this independent x and y variables, uh, the multiplication of those can be written as this separate multiplications of these expectations. So we will apply this here. With that, we will separate these terms. So this first expectation times the second one. We know that the mean is zero here for the noise. So this term goes to zero and this whole thing becomes zero. So with this, we are able to get rid of this term here. So this becomes zero. What is left? We have these two other terms here. And we will continue our derivation. In the next slide, I will this time focus on this second term. So let's go on. Let's introduce another term here, f bar of x. As I said before, this is kind of the typical value of our function or the average value of our function. And we can use this for predictions. Here, we can write it down like this, expected value of f bar f hat d of x. And this becomes the average prediction of the ML model over every training set. So we are going to use this. Let's first apply a mathematical trick here. I'm going to subtract and add this same term so nothing changes. Then I will take the square. Let's do that. Again, I apply this first rule here. And I can just break it down into separate terms. And similarly, I will focus on this multiplication term. Here, the first thing I realize is that I have some deterministic functions here. This fx and this f bar of x are not random. They are deterministic. Because of that, I can actually just drop this expected value here. And these are just the functions. Then I'm going to apply this expected value on the second part. So let's do that. Here, I just applied this good old first rule here. So I just break it down. Here I have a bunch of terms. Uh, and this will be familiar because we just uh, introduced this term here. So let's just apply that. So this turns into this f bar of x. And the expected value of something that is not random, random, will be the value itself. So we can again see that here. The subtraction becomes 0. And overall, we are able to get rid of this multiplication term here. So it's good news. We got rid of that. Similarly, let's also apply this uh, deterministic function idea on this expected value here. With that, we can again drop this expected value. Let's see what we have at the end. Overall, also carrying out my error term, this is what we have. We started with this error on the left, and we are able to derive this right-hand side. We have this bias square, variance, and error terms.